have to ask your patient if he has or had any history of this overexertion and excite your pain. So patient over 40, you have to ask him this question too. If you have any pain or chest pain during exercise or over-exercise. Women post-mesal, post-story, post-menopausal women after 40, 45, you have to ask her the same question. If she has any anxiety or had any anxiety or she has any problem, like when she had anxiety, she had a chest pain at the same time. It means he has a problem with the blood supply, I mean coronary blood supply to the heart tissue at the same time. So what's going on exactly with the, with the coronary heart disease? It's a spasm of coronary artery. After this is spastic coronary artery, the blood supply of the heart tissue itself is going to be compromised or reduced. So with this kind of deoxygenation or hypoxygenation, look at there is two terms. There's oxygenation, there is oxidation. Oxidation is part of metabolism. Oxygenation when the blood supply carrying oxygen to the tissue. So for us, especially with ischemic heart diseases, we are talking about oxygenation, not the oxidation. Oxygenation when, you, when actually when inhaled oxygen. Oxidation when you get something burn and you're gonna get oxidized tissue like a carbon something, like carbon dioxide. So myocardial oxygenation is important for us and any deficiency, any issue in myocardial oxygenation, you're gonna get ischemic heart disease or coronary insufficiency or myocardial plus a supply insufficiency or coronary uh, myocardial uh, uh, hypoxygenation. All these terms goes to the same thing, ischemic heart disease. When the myocardium got issue with the blood supply through coronary artery, so uh, the myocardium at first is going to actually uh, contract, but with, with insufficiency blood supply, so the con con contraction is going to be not enough to pump blood. After a while, this myocardium goes to the another, another stage, which is myocardial necrosis, because there is no blood supply, there is no more oxygenation. And this sequelae goes to the other side or to the other point of ischemic heart disease. Now we have insufficiency only without any damage. Still, we don't have any damage of myocardium. So at this stage, we have only angina pectoris before go to the second stage and then we're gonna talk about the second stage of ischemic heart disease. Usually when your patient start any pain during anxiety or during the treatment or surgical treatment, the pain will start on sternal or retrosternal area after the sternal bone on behind the sternal bone, which is the midline of your thoracic cage, catching the ribs, you know the sternum. And the pain will radiate, usually radiates to the left shoulder and left arm and left neck, sometimes the occipital area. So when your patient starts this kind of pain, think about the ischemic heart disease, you have to evaluate your patient, and re-evaluate your patient from ischemic point of view. Some patient, because of severe pain, which is stopping type of pain, and usually when your patient, when, actually you know, most of you guys, you know, when your patient got something written, and, like for example, a trauma or severe pain, because of vagal stimulation as a response, some people, when they got this response, like vagal stimulation, the body start doing some kind of vasovalsalva maneuver, vasoconstriction activity, to actually to push the blood from the other parts of your body, from distal extremities to the brain level. So all these kind of pushing blood with contraction maybe create some kind of um, nauseating action or no, vomiting if the patient actually has a, has a full stomach. 
So this response, a uh, uh, valsava response, valsava response is very important sign of ischemic pain or ischemic heart attack. So uh, don't neglect any kind of vomiting, especially with 40 hour, 40 patients. I mean, age 40 or 40 years of patients. Think of that a lot, please, okay? Some patient, they got vomiting and they got vasovagal attack before before sensation of shoulder or retrosternal pain. And that way, don't think about that just like a fainting or regular fainting. You have to check, please. If your patient start aching or start, start actually uh, feel chest pain after vomiting, he start to put his hand on his chest. So in that way, you have to combine these symptoms and then you have to reevaluate your patient as a part, as a patient of ischemic or history of ischemic heart disease. What should I do when I got patient like that? First of all, I have to stop everything. I have to manage the situation. And usually, if you have any oxygen, you have to support your patient with oxygen. So supplementary oxygenation is mandatory sometimes. It's going to help a lot. Without doing any medical or pharmacological intervention, please, because I have to get, to, I have to check with the patient. I have to review the history and reevaluate the history, and then you have to consult if he has or had any issue before. I have to consult the physician. I have to consult the medical practitioner. So basically, I have to ask the patient the first question, how many times you get this type of pain? And what about the duration? When you get this type of pain, for how long it's going to stay with, your, with this kind of pain? And at the same time, I have to ask the severity. Like, I have to tell him, I, have, I will give you score from 1 to 10. So give me the number. Like, so he said, I have around 5. From, oh, from 10, or I have seven among 10. So you have to evaluate this pain score of your patient, for example, from one to five or one to 10. I prefer one to 10, because usually with five, it means the uh, intermediate and the more, if you go more severe, so it goes to the number 10 or you're gonna stay on number two or one, so it is a mild type. So we have three categories, for example. I can categorize my patient symptoms and uh, depending on the patient, words when I ask the patient to talk about the history, frequency, severity. Maybe I will put my patient on one or two, it's mild. When I, maybe I put my patient on five, which is a moderate or mild, uh, sorry, moderate. Maybe I have to put my patient eight, nine, ten with severe case. Please, so you have to score your patient, okay? So in general, in mild cases, maybe under control with you know, supplementary oxygen, for example. But in some patients, it has moderate type of pain. And then I have to ask the doctor or the physician about some kind of treatment for ischemic heart disease, which is actually, for me, sometimes mandatory. And you know, and you heard about the oral nitroglycerin. Uh, Oral nitroglycerin nowadays actually uh, available like a sticker, you know, like, a, yeah, I mean, first aid sticker, like other plaster in Stamila. TG Methamarat be a patch, Telisak Ala Kitif, Tamil nitroglycerin release. Our oral nitroglycerin. So, but don't start nitroglycerin unless your patient physician actually advise you to put the nitroglycerin for moderate cases before you start your treatment. So still I have to consult, because sometimes you're going to get very low blood pressure with that kind of treatment. Then, some patients have a minimum epsida, minimum attack of angina pain. 
with this comfortability. So both mild and moderate with medical consultation, we are able to control them for uh, oral surgery with nitroglycerin treatment. So basically we have mild, which is controlled with some, most of the time with reassurance, with short visit, morning visit, without any pharmacological treatment. And still we have moderate, and actually minimum and moderate, maybe, maybe we have to consult the physician about the nitroglycerin. The third type, which is unstable angina. Unstable angina is the worst scenario in this kind of uh, ischemic heart disease. Because most of the cases are under exercise and anxiety and over exercise, over activity. While in unstable angina, most of the cases or yetarif and when you got angina pain or substernal pain or ischemic pain at rest marita gaad yusur anda pain would be recurrent adil hala you have to postpone everything again and you have to wait because most of the doctor with patient unstable with unstable angina they postpone the patient for like three to six months unless he has any emergency treatment so with that scenario you have to put question mark my patient is and un with unstable angina so both moderate and mild are stable kind of angina which is controlled most of the time with nitroglycerin while unstable angina is a question mark. Don't play this game. And don't get the game, this game on, on, on your responsibility, please. So now, after I leave this slide, we have stable and unstable angina. Okay, guys? Any question right now? Ashaba? No, doctor. Montage. المحاضرة واضحة بهاي الطريقة لو عندكم أي طريقة أخرى يعني للتوضيح أوكي أنجينا بكتورس إن جنرال when you get patient with أنجينا بكتورس you have to follow a protocol of treatment because most of the patient, you have to prepare before surgery and after or intraoperatively. I mean, during the surgery and after surgery. So most of the patient are controlled before and after and during the surgery. So before the appointment, the night, one night before the appointment, after a medical consultation, Maybe it takes four or five days before the treatment, but still I have to concentrate, I have to focus on the day of, before the surgery, the, the, the night before the day of the surgery. So most of them, they like, I mean, most of the protocols, not of the patient, the protocols like to, to actually to use sleep aids. I'm sorry, I don't know, Maria. Stress aids, قلل stress. Well, at the same time, before you start at the same day of surgery, you have to sedate your patient. Most of them, they like sedation too. Preoperative, the night before day of surgery, some kind of hypnotic, some kind of sleep aids. Musaadat and no. Diazepam, sleep aid pills. So, in general, Think about that one day before surgery. During the surgery, at the day of the surgery, يعني يفضل أن تمريضك تبدي الصبح. 
صورة عامة ما حب المريض يكون اللي هو بصورة عامة جراحة تكون الصبح أكو صوت يمكن ما أعرف مين أجا أوكي The morning appointment is very important. As you know, I think you always in the operations, in the calls, etc. They use the morning appointment more. And you can give sedation on the same day of the operation. And you can also do nitrous oxide if it is available in your hospital. So hypnotic the day before and sedation on the same day of surgery and morning appointment. Aya. بعض الخطوات والبروتوكولات اللي قبل عمل الانجينا باكتورس او ريسكيميك هار ديزيز والانجينا باكتورس بصوره عامه انا احب اشغل مريضي من اقعد مثلا بالعمليه ما اخليه صافن يباوع على الاغراض ويباوع على الستاف فبليز تراي تو اوكيوباي يور بيشنت يعني شغلوه باسئله بعيده عن اي هاي النقطه كلش اركز عليها فد علاج جدا بسيط حاول المريض يعني مثل الجيت Theory, pain, pain get theory. من مريضك ديوجا هنا أنا حاول يعني تروح على مناطق أخرى تحرك. إذا أنت متطي الإنجكشن ممكن يسوي فايبريشن على المنطقة يصير جيت يعني بحد ما يحس من يضل يتحول على الألم مو الألم عفوا اللي عاز تركيز البرين على النقطة أخرى. فهالجيت ثيوري استعملوها دائما. شلون أنتم مثلا واحد عنده نوزيا أو فوميتينج أو Gagging reflex, كل حركة رجليك, biking like, مثل bicycle, لازم يد. هذا سؤال جيت يعني تح. The pathway, ما كان ما راح بهذا ال freeway طلع على غير مكان. هذا اللي نستعمله إحنا دائما. ف frequent variable reassurance طبعا أنت حاول توضح للعمل سهل كذا أنت شايف plan داخل لمواضيع أكو مرات TV مرات music كلش مهمة هاي تعمل تغيير حقيقة تأثر وايد. يعني انت مثلا شايف احنا مرات بعض الاطباء يتصور من يستعرض الاشياء قبال المريض الجفوف وجاب العربه مال غرات ترى هذا كله ستريس هذا كله ادرينالين اف يور بيشنت از از اسكيميك از هاز اور هاد اسكيميك هارد ديزيز اتاك سو كل هاي انت تساعده تعطي اكثر من جرعه الابنفرين انت تخاف من عدم من الـ من اللوكال انستيك ايجنت وأحبذ الآن تقول كلكم عرفتوا الأكسيميتر الآن اللي استعمل اللي هو الثامب أكسيميتر أو تقدر تخلي عندك أكو نوع من أكسيميتر على الـ على الـ نفس الجهاز مالت المونيتور اللي استعمل هو يستعمل أنا أحب استعمل المونيتور دائما إذا ماكو مونيتور جهاز الضغط الآن الموجود بالسوق اللي هو ب 40 50 ألف خليه على يد المريض وما تخليه دائما تايت طبعا لازم أنت تحتاج واستعملها بس توس الدكمة ان يعطيك ايش قد مريضك ضغطه خلال العمل وخلي بالس ميتر سعره 10 15 دولار فهاي اني البالس ميتر وهذا جهاز الضغط لو تستعمله روتين لهذا الفيتال ساين ساين سوري اسسمنت انتر اوبريتيف وتقدر تخيل لك بالعياده قنينه اكسجين واحده بسيطه يعني تنقذك يعني من كثير من الامور هسه تقول لي دكتور خطر الاكسجين طبعا انت دائما خلي في بالك ماكو قنية أكسجين بدون جيج هذه الأخطاء اللي نسمعها هسه إحنا أكثر قنية الأكسجين ما بيها هذا الفالف جيج راح تقرأ وتشوف أكو طالع دي يطلع أكسجين لا لا أنت تقدر تنظر عليها تلقاها زيرو تقدر تلقاها شوية فوق الزيرو تقدر يطلع ليك عندك دائما في صلاة العمليات نخاف من ليك نتأكد من الجيجات فهذا المونيتور الموجود أيضا يعني ما ندخل بهذا الموضوع فإحنا عندنا هسه فيربور أشورنس هذا ديونج اوبريشن انا بعدني سويت اشياء طبعا قبل وهسه خلال العمل استعمل سمباثيك ريلاكسينج باك جراوند او ميوزك او اني كايند اوف توكينج او تي في سام تايم ان لوكال انستيزيا اكو كونتروفيرسي عليها بعضهم يطلبون من لوكال انستيزيا تكون ذا بينافرين وبعضهم يقول لا ما دون بينافرين جاست بلين انستيزيا Actually, I agree with both. I prefer to use local anesthesia with enough intensity. يعني على خليها مكان الشغل ما ضل وزعها وضيع المريض وضيع الدوزات عالية. حتى حصل high intensity, longer duration at the site of surgery, and the most important part, I have to use aspirating syringe. 
So aspirating storage for me is very important because if you have local anesthetic agent with epinephrine and you inject without aspirating, maybe you're going to involve the vascular stream. So in that way, maybe you induce the epinephrine intravascular injection with hemorrhoidae. And further, we are around the vessels, not inside the vessel. So the aspirating syringe is going to solve this issue. So please, vital signs, and if I have to come vital signs, and we will tell you vital signs in the intraoperative, we will use the monitor, or we will use the cuff for blood pressure, and we will use blood pressure plus pulse rate. We will use the oximeter, which is very important for ischemic heart disease. حتى نشوف يعني ممكن مريضك يبدي يقل أكسجينا أو كذا كل هاي العوامل تساعدكم إنه تطلعون بوضع إنه يكون مريضكم in general pre and intra and post as a stable general medical condition. Okay. رح نرجع إحنا مريضنا رح يطلع من العمل ولازم after surgery I have to prescribe and I have to instruct my patient too. مو بس وصفة دواء وراح لازم instruction يعني إحنا ممكن الدواء مع instruction هو هو نجاح ال post operative care. الدواء واحدة بدون instruction هو خسارة ال post operative care. وأنا برأيي post operative care هي يعني مثل ما أنت تشتري سيارة جديدة إذا ما تعتني بها post operative اللي راح تدمر أحد أحد السيارة عندك. فمثل ما تسوي عملية حلوة ونظيفة وسكسفل. So you have to survive, you have to stay with the optimization of your surgery. But the issue, the whole thing goes to the patient direction. You know, كل رحاس لنا من الأمان وحقيبة العمل المريضي. فإذا المريضي لازم أنا أعطي post op instruction ومناسبة. The post operative instruction should be verbal and written. يعني إحنا نفتقد لل consent paper والله نايدب هنا بال consent paper. بحيث تكره العمل من وراء الكونسنت بيبر واني قلت اما قررت وين نفسي ما اسوي شيء يعني انا مشتغل بالعراق قبل واشتغلت هنا فتره وراجع للعراق ان شاء الله ولما خلصنا تدريب فالدراسه علمونا اهم شغله الكونسنت بيبر كلش اللي حاليها يعني مزعجه مرات نصرف يوم كامل سيشن كامل بس نسوي كونسنت بيبر اللي هي الميديكال ليجال كونسنت بيبر سو so, احنا مرات مثلا الاستاجار بس نطيها بالحكي هو المريض بس يرجع يطلع من غرفه العمل وانت بس تخلص المريض عند سكيميك هارد ديز والحمد لله خلاص بدا طلع سالم يتمشى بينزل الدرج ويروح او طالع برا فكل هاي تخلينا احنا نفقد نقطه مهمه هي الفيربل ريتن بوست اب انستراكشن واني كلش ركز عليها ولما اقول ريتن يعني اكتبها رجاء بطبله المريض ما قلت لي راسا مو تجي عليك هاي <تصفيق> But please, you have to document everything. طبعا المريض لك راح يقول لك صار عندي دم وصار عندي ورم ورمت وهاي المشكلة وين؟ المشكلة مرات يجيك المريض ثاني يوم ثالث يوم هو regularly or routinely or you know by default we got swelling after surgery, whatever even minor surgery. As a body defense mechanism, there is the first phase of body mechanism is the inflammatory process, then coagulative process. Then organization the process of fibrous formation and regeneration. So first step is what is the inflammatory process, inflammation, swelling, edema, uh, exudate, okay, transudate. So all these collection inside the cavity creating a swelling. So we just found you on your ramut or enter by the malakat. If you have consent, you will tell you that you have swelling, a normal post-surgical sequelae, and you will have oozing. راح يقول لك دكتور كل ما تفل دم نزف هذا نو no. هذا سلايفا ميكس وذ بلاد بليدنج 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 يبدي عندك اميديتلي ممكن يبدي بعد 10 ايام اذا عندك انفكشن سو so, هذا واحد بلاد اوزي مرات البلاد اوز يعني يتنفس قدامك قبل ما يطلع المريض ممكن بالبريشر يصير عندك هدوء بي بس ما ينقطع هذا اوز راح يستمر عند المريض والمريض راح يبدي يصير عنده رياكشن النسيج تروح من عنده فيبدي عنده ريسبونس للبين البلاد بريشر يزداد اللوكال انفلاماتوري ريكشن يزداد راح يصير اوزنج اكثر كنترول ات ذا ديت ات ذا تايم اوف سيرجري بليز اند اس يور بيشنت تو ويت 30 مينتس بوست اوبريتيفلي وذ افتر 30 مينتس يو غانا تشيك يور بيشنت اف هي هاز اني بروفيوز اور مور بليدنج بوست اوب Post-op or post-operative, 
call because your patient has a compromisation, whatever is ischemic heart disease, angina, or all types of medical compromisation. Call your patient, follow your patient, and ask your patient. أحلى شيء من تتخابر ثانية أو ثالث يوم تتأكد من الخطوات السجلتها بالverbal والwritten consent paper. Ask him. Do you have any swelling? Do you have any oozing? Do you have any blood? Do you have any pain? Do you have any dehiscence? Any question regarding the pharmacological treatment? Any question regarding your type of nutrition? Any question regarding the mouthwashes? So post-operative recall for me is very important. Perfect. Ischemic heart disease مثل ما قلت لكم تبتدا بال angina pectoris اللي هي مثل ما عرفنا narrowing of coronary artery supplying or actually transmit the oxygen to the myocardium. If the stage persists without any surgical, without any ممكن surgical sure, without any medical intervention. So the angina pectoris will go to the next step. The next step is what? The next step is myocardial infarction. Actually, which is more advanced stage of ischemic heart disease than angina pectoris. In that situation, we'll, patient will get something almost permanent. Almost permanent. Or semi-permanent which is damage or necrosis of the myocardial muscle. Because if the deoxygenation or hypoxygenation persists, the cellular dysfunction will be increased. And the muscle will end up by necrosis, which is kind of coagulative necrosis. We learned in the third pathology, general pathology, coagulative and coagulative necrosis. So all these because of narrowing in the coronary artery or block sometime of the coronary artery. I mean, sometimes there is no blood or sometimes there is a juice in the blood. So in both situations, there is low oxygen supply. With this necrotic myocardium, or infected, the muscle becomes non-functional, unfortunately. And the non-functionality, it depends on the part of the necrosis or necrotic foci. As you remember, there is a blood coming from the systemic circulation and from pulmonary circulation to the ventricles, and there is a bundle of conducting system at the septum between ventricles and an atrium, go to Purkinje fiber, stimulating the end plate at the apexes apex of the ventricles. So the ventricles on both sides, maybe one side, maybe some four sides in your and the heart muscles will be affected by deoxygenation. So by that mechanism, the site of necrosis, wherever it is at the site of the pacemaker, mungkin you can build bundle of pankanji bundles, mungkin be going adna be a nukta bil heart, or hala asasa ikun damage. Methana bil pacemaker atria ventricular or Sinoatrial area. For any منطقه راح تضرر راح تدينا إلى خلل بالنقلة مال the beats مال heart. The contraction sequence. For هذا this actually matching of myocardial movement between atrium and ventricles, you're gonna end up with kind of this arrhythmia or arrhythmia or arrhythmic arrhythmia. So all these kinds of dysarrhythmia depends on which foci involved in the necrosis or which part of conducting system. Look at the two foci, these are 
بالخطوات of ischemic heart disease بدأت pain ويكون البين ممكن بسيط أو moderate أو severe and the patient ends up with what with infarction which is kind of necrosis okay تقبلكم الوقت الخارج لا نتأخر على محاضرتكم تمام again as any kind of medical issue or problem comprisation you have to consult patient if the patient had this problem like for example two three four five six months before definitely myocardial infarction should had I mean a very severe sign and symptoms the signs your patient sometimes has like a sinus face some fingernails clubbing sometimes if it's chronic or long term some patient has a very severe arrhythmia some patient they got some like kind of uh, a shock because of the uh, deoxygenated muscles on this arrhythmia or arrhythmic arrhythmia with it sometimes create some heart attack or some kind of heart failure so all these kind of complication of this non-functional muscle you have to ask about so اكيد مريضك راح يكون مار بصعوبات امراض القلب والاتاك بيفور يعني عندنا احنا انفاكشن الان مو جست تشيست بين ان انزايتي اور اوفر اكتيفيتي اور اوفر اكسرسايز سو يوزوالي يوزوالي فور الكتيف سيرجري وذ بيشنت اور مايوكارديال انفاكشن انفاكتد بيشنت يو هاف تو اف ات از الكتيف يو هاف تو كونسلت اند يو هاف تو بوسبوند يور بيشنت 6 مانث after infarction but again health care is six months the answer no you have to ask about the frequency of pain or frequency of attack because some patient they got reef infarction after the first attack maybe some patient got another infarction, re-infarction. And most of the infected patient or infected patient have anticoagulant treatment, including aspirin. So, as you know, this protocol of anticoagulant, you have to control before you start your treatment, whether it's elective or it's emergency treatment. Definitely you have to consult about the type of anticoagulant and some doctors will stop the anticoagulant and there is a special protocols, like for example, it's an aspirin. Aspirin can be used Alan, according to the American Heart Association, we have to use it in لأن إحنا ممكن هذا الليكوفيكيشن of the blood itself it's create issue بحيث ما يقدر يصير مريض على مرحلة تخثر لأبسط شدة صلعة الجسم فهذا مثل خطر فالمهم نتعامل مع الانتيكاغلانت with the medical supervisor to reduce the anticoagulant minimum three days to stop the anti don't stop the anticoagulant by yourself okay so you have to think about that because any problem with your patient you say you stop the anticoagulant form so please consult about the stopping and inform your patient that we're gonna stop it temporarily and then we're gonna go back using this anticoagulant after the surgery again oxygen supplemental support for me is important as I said put your vital signs monitor put oxygen cylinder in your neuro clinic and Support your patient with these two things as a management or intraoperative medical management. With local anesthesia, the question is, should I use local anesthesia with adrenaline, without adrenaline? Should I use uh, epinephrine 
without epinephrine? Should I use regular no conventional syringe or aspirating syringe? The answer of this question is aspirating syringe is mandatory for me. But some patients, some doctors, they don't like to use the aspirating syringe. Oh, they don't have they don't have aspirating syringe. But if you ask me, uh, if you want to ask you again, if you got patient with myocardial infarction and then you inject the epinephrine intravascularly, the first question I will ask you, not about the epinephrine. Epinephrine, some people, they use epinephrine because with, with the plain anesthesia, you're going to lose the function. I mean, the intensity of anesthesia, actually, after a few minutes, maybe maybe 20 minutes, depends on the patient pain threshold. While with local anesthesia, with adrenaline, maybe you're going to lose the intensity after like 40 minutes. So I have good intensity of 40 minutes to complete my surgery without pain because pain will induce more pain, more anxiety. So an anxiety creates more pain to your heart patient. But I have to use that with epinephrine plus aspirating syringe to, have, to, to, be, to check if I'm intra or outside the vessels. Some patient needs a very elective small surgery. You can't use plain, or you can use both. I use um, I block the patient with the plan I use with adrenaline around the area to reduce the pain and reduce the bleeding. Again, as I was, as we said in the angina pectoris, sedation is important. Sometimes nitrous oxide is important for this kind of patient. Hypnosis is important at the day or one night before. So the management almost the same between ischemic heart disease, mangina pectoris, and ischemic heart disease, myocardial infarction, except with myocardial infarction, usually six months after that last attack, I recommend that unless you have to do emergency. So if the attack, like for example, three months ago, and we have to do emergency, you have to consult, okay? Six months after first attack, for me, it's actually, it's a safe area. Three months, no. You have to consult, please. Any questions, Shabab? No. No, I'm doctor. No, I'm doctor. I'm doctor. Can we open the question a little bit? So, before we end the presentation, do you have another presentation for this presentation? No. We have to take five minutes for the question from your time. نستمر لو ناخذ اسئله كمل دكتور ممتاز سو so, احنا لحد الان بدنا نعمل مانجمنت للمايوكارديال انفكشن اللي هو اهم نقطه بي 6 مانس نانا البايبت ما شغلنا اجين يعني ممكن الفيربال كونتاكت احنا مثل ما اتفقنا في كل الامراض اللي نشوفها كل المرضى عندهم كومبرومايزيشن حاولوا تشغلون بالكلام يعني مو ندوخه مثل ما نقول وانما اريد ابعد الفيلد عنه ما استعرض العضلات قباله وشفافي وماسكي وهاي الحركات وغراض طاق وطيق والسيستر تجيب وتو... ماكو ابد تتهيئ وتتكفر راسا تتغطى باي شيء عندكم تاول معينه تغطون تسوون له كفرنج لان هذا يعني انتم شايفين مرات المريض ما يدخل شيء يدور يدور على ادوات الجراحيه راح تشتغلوا له فيها يعني فيو هاف تو كفر يو هاف تو افويد ذات راح يجيكم ايضا موضوع النتريجليسيرين وهو ايضا جزء من العلاج المايوكارديال انفكشن النيتروجليسيرين اصبح الان بالانجينا باكتورس وبالمايوكارديال انفكشن بس بالحالتين انا اي هاف تو اسك ذا فيزيشن كود اي يوز النيتروجليسيرين اور يو هاف تو اسك ذا فيزيشن اور ذا فيزيشن سوري Is your patient or my patient already under nitroglycerin? In both situations, I have to put the nitroglycerin as a prophylactic in case your patient has some kind of chest pain or choking sensation. Most of the necrotic or myocardial infarction patient comes with what? Because of the necrosis, because of the damage with myocardium, 
فممكن احنا ايش راح نعمل هذا المريض ممكن راح نعمل بعض العمليات اللي يرقع بها الكورونري ارتريز سو موست اوف ذي سيرجريز ستارتنج فروم باي باس يعني ممكن الكورونري ارتري اللي مثلا بلوكت هذا بلوكت يجيبون كورونري ارتري اخر يعملوا كروس او باي باس يتحاولون يتلافون البلاك بارت كورونري ارتري سو سو انستموسس كورونري تو كورونري انستموسس There is a graft procedure. The graft procedure, they grafted, they bring something from different area, like for example, saphenous. Saphenous vein, اللي هو يجي من القدم, وهذا saphenous vein من القدم يربط بالكورونري artery. وهذا الكورونري artery مع saphenous vein يعمل saphenous veins هو veins من القدم مثلا موجود بالقدم يعملوا graft. under microscope يعملون بالضبط uh, uh, arteriovenous anastomosis under the microscope so بصورة عامة هذا المريض تعالج من الـ من الـ من الـ infection still I have to wait three and إذا عندك مشكلة كبيرة مع الـ consultation و 6 months اذا الكتف مريضي مريضي ما محتاج سرعه بالعمل. سو نتعامل مع المايوكارديال انفكشن والكورونري بيشنت باي باس او كورونري بيشنت جرافت جاست لايك ذا مايوكارديال انفكشن هو 3 فور ايمرجنسي 6 فور الكتف. اوكي. طبعا احنا محاضراتنا السيرفر واسكولار والبالمونري تقريبا ثلاث محاضرات فراح نوزع احنا الفاسكولار ديزيز الكارديو فاسكولار ديزيز على ثلاث محاضرات فاحنا اليوم محاضراتنا ركزت على السكيميك هارد ديزيز الانجينا وركزت على المايكارديال انفاكشن وراح ناخذ فر شيء بسيط على السي في اي راح نسمع بها هاي السيرفر فاسكولار اكسيدنت اور ستراك الديفرنس بين بوث انه احنا عندنا تو سيستمز جسمنا يعني عندنا تو كمبيوترز بين الكاردياك سيستم والسيربرال سيستم بوث سيستمز ار كونكتد تو ايتش اذر طبعا احنا نعرف ال ال stimulation from the brain tissue to the heart tissue. So any damage ممكن يبدأ بالسيربرم راح يأثر على ال vascular system. و any damage بال vascular system ممكن يأثر على ال brain tissue. So for example ممكن هذا الام اي اللي صار عنده يروح كلوت من الهارت كونوري ارتري وهي البامبينج تو ذا سيربرال تيشو تو ذا برين تيشو سو يو ويل اند اب وذ سيربرال فاسكولار اكسيدنت ذا سي في اي هير ذير از ا نيورو اور نيرفوس سيستم دامج اجين ات ديبيند اون ذا فوساي whether in the frontal lobe, whether in parietal lobe, whether in occipital lobe, whether in temporal lobe. So in different areas, you know, the brain full of areas. So the accident could be on the, for example, منطقة السمع. ممكن منطقة التوازن. ممكن منطقة, ممكن منطقة behavior, the frontal. ممكن the visual acuity, the occipital. ممكن تكون بالمراكز اريا بالنطق بالليفت سايد ممكن تكون بالفالنتري ماسكولار موفمنت ممكن تكون بالانفالنت ف ديبيند سوري ما اطول عليكم فالحركه اللي راح تكون مع البامب مال الهارت من الفاسكولار سيستم مثلا امبلس او الفبريليشن او الثرومبوس طبعا احنا ليش نربط بين الفبريليشن والثرومبوس والامبلس اذا الهارت بامبينج ريجولارلي راح يدفع البلاد ريجولارلي الى الفاسكولار سيستم ومن الفاسكولار الى البريفيرال تيشي وهذا الهارت فيبريليشن لايك ذير از نو كونتراكشن لايك انكومبليت كونتراكشن 
so the blood will be stay here or here stagnant stasis with this sluggish movement too much friction with the vascular endothelium the vascular coagulation system will be stimulated it will cause just and the injury but all injury our first step will be how it will be well coagulability coagulate a formation of clot the thrombus وهذا الهارت من يكون فبريليتد ممكن البلاد يمشي ويتوقف يمشي ويتوقف فالستريم يكون بيناته ممكن امبلس فراغات هوائية ممكن يتحرك الى السيربرال ارتريز والسيربرال ارتريز او الارتريز راح يصير بيها بلاك تو سو البلاك ممكن تكون تاثير الفبريليشن من ثرومبوس كلوت اتسلف او ممكن من امبلس بالحالتين راح ننتهي The cerebral accident, damage, necrosis, necrotic fossae. Just like the heart tissue. Brain tissue is going to get necrosis. And when the brain tissue got necrosis, which type of necrosis? Liquefactive, for example, in the brain. Coagulative, for example, in the myocardium. But in general, we got insufficient blood supply and there is a necrotic fossae. And it depends on the damage. Most of the patient with CVA has a neurological issue, like in movement, in talking, jaw movement, tongue movement, facial movement, controlling or the actually the harmony of your masticatory system. So all these factors signs depends on the area of the damage. You're gonna face it during your work, but in your patient. Make that a bit of joke. You have to really last minute mouth prop. So all these you have to think about that because CBA patient or movement. Okay, that. I like about the Jamia. Again, your patient with a thrombus formation should be under anticoagulant oral. Usually, outpatient oral anticoagulant. So with oral anticoagulant, you have to ask the physician about the protocol. Should I stop by myself? Should I ask the patient to stop the anticoagulant? Should your patient, should your doctor check the INR of the patient, the clotting time, the bleeding time, then they're going to control everything for you. To do your, and you have to prescribe, I have to describe your surgery, whether it is elective or minor or mid, mid, moderate or severe or like or extra major or something like that. You have to describe. So it's your duty and the patient physician and duty at the same time. Usually, as I said, most of the patient with cerebrovascular accident or most of the patient with MI or pectoris or angina pectoris, I mean ischemic heart disease, they do have hypertension. And then you have to control the hypertension. I mean, you, ha you don't have to control the hypertension by yourself. You have to monitor the hypertension. Hypertensive patient before and during the surgery and immediately after the surgery. Like for example, I خلي طابلة I خلي ورقة I خلي كونسنت I خلي صبورة صغيرة على الحياة وأكتب بديت عملية 160 140 over 90 أثناء العملية صار عندي زيادة هل قد أو قل هل قد انتهت من عملية and blood pressure multi for example 140 over 150 uh, sorry 90 for example. So document all the, especially for hypertensive patients. If you ask me about the hypnosis and anxiety, actually I will say something for you. This patient not like the, 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 the ischemic heart disease, already got damage. So usually you have to think about anticoagulant and hypertensive control, that's it. Not like the anxiety patient with angina pectoris. Not like patient with infarction. Usually, you have to think. In general, vital signs for all your for all patient actually in your in your practice. But documentation for hypertensive patients should be before, after, one night before, the morning of your surgery, during the morning, then and during the surgery and post op. Post op, قبل ما روح البيت كلش مهم عندي. إنه طلع من عندي هذا ضغط. حتى لو يطلع بيت لو يطلع طبيبه لو يطلع مستشفى ان كان عندي اي شيء بالبلد 
مرات مريضك يجي يعني انا يمن اركز على الدوكيمنت هو يعني يعني خير تحميكم والله يجي مريض هو عنده ويكنس بسبب السيرفر فاسكولار اكسيدنت شوفوا قدكم المصدر بسبب الفاسكولار نيورو فاسكولار بسبب السيرفر فاسكولار سي في اي يجي عنده مثلا فد نوع من الويكنس باللور ليب او عنده نوع من الويكنس بالايس او عنده فور اكزامبل فد نوع من اللوس اوف سنسيشن اي مين ايفريثينج ريليتد تو ذا ماوث And then you do your surgery. When you did your surgery, then then after that he said, I have this one numbness, numbness in my lip during because of the surgery. I got uh, paresthesia of the tongue because of the surgery. I got shift in my tongue because of surgery. So if you document the neurological issue because he has or he had a patient had a cerebral vascular accident, so definitely has a problem had a problem before. So definitely. You have to think about that. You have to document that. So when you, with CVA patient and you are start treatment in the, for example, for some reason you're going to do surgery intraorally. So think about you have to check intraoral. Ask the patient to move his tongue right to left. Ask the patient to move to like for example whistling. Just push. Uh, just push your lip forward. Ask your patient to. Showing his posterior teeth, so as all movement of facial nerve damage, because I don't like to get the responsibility of the weakness. First up, if you want to check the needle by propping, by يعني نام ناس ممكن تسهل بجيب قطنة مشيها على الوجه وت دائما استعمل الوجه من both side حتى أعرف التحسس حتى يقارن بين right and left. Okay, so هاي الأشياء بسيطة يعني ممكن تنقذك هو يا شباب. أنا محاضرتي لهنا توقف على التوقيت مالتنا هي ساعة و أجين جس عندي هاي السلايد بسيط ما حكينا إحنا الأنتي كوجنان كنترول أن إكزايتي أن فيتال ساينس فور مي إز إمبورتنت بات النيتروكس أوكسايد مذكور بالكتب بات إحنا ما راح نستعمله هواية بعملنا بس أنا لازم أذكره بس أفضل تكون سيديشن بعض المرضى الهايبرتنشن أستعمل وياهم سيديشن أخفف بالهيبنوتيك الضغط عليه من أول اليوم قبل العملية by one night before just like any patient with an anxiety حتى ليس الضغط ممكن أكثر ال CVA patient هم hypertensive as I told uh, نطي فد خمس دقائق أو أقل إذا عندكم أسئلة رجاء عن المحاضرة هذا راح ينزل عندكم ال PowerPoint على شكل PDF اليوم إن شاء الله وبعدها راح انزل لكم تشابتر مو تشابتر راح تخترع من تشابتر انزل لكم كم صفحه تقروها اذا تحبون تعمقون اكثر اذا احد الاشخاص سجلها وانا عندي محاضرات مسجله راح تبدي تنزل تدريجيا ويا محاضراتكم يمكن شويه اللغه يعني انتم يعني اكيد ما اعرف انتم توضحوا لي شلون تردوها المحاضرات وارجع بالمره القادمه اغير اسلوبي حسب ما انتم يعني مرتئي تستعملوه بالكليه اوكي شباب ملاحظاتكم اسئلتكم اذاعتكم دكتور عندي سؤال اذا سمحت اشكرك تفضل 